In this video, we'll investigate sport as a commodity. A quick look at the syllabus and you'll see that the important components include the development of professional sport, sport as big business, sponsorship, advertising and sport, the economics of hosting major sporting events, and the consequences for spectators and participants. And the Learn To statement analyze the consequences for various sports as they have adopted a business focus. So we begin at defining what a commodity is. A commodity is a product that can be bought or sold. And throughout this presentation, you'll understand that sport over time has become a product that can be bought and sold. So it is seen as a commodity. And some examples of this include how sporting competitions are packaged up and sold to the highest bidder. For example, broadcast networks like Channel 9 or Foxtel. And also how athletes can be traded for large sums of money and allow them to earn large salaries. And also the idea that player managers are able to negotiate lucrative salaries and deals for their players. We begin by looking at the development of professional sport in the previous video, we looked at how sport has changed over time, particularly when we look back at the 19th century. But from the 1970s onward, we saw far greater commercialism and professionalism in sport. And this was shown through the transformation of some of the suburban competitions and transforming into national competitions. Uh, and sports like the AFL and the National Rugby League were searching for larger audiences. And of course, there was an increased presence of advertising and sponsorship in sport. In the 1980s, we saw television play a much bigger role in broadcasting sport to the public. And so clubs were also more dependent on sponsorship and TV broadcast deals to enable their competitions to be more professional and to be able to pay their players uh, the salaries that they thought that they deserved. The 1990s were a, an important decade for professional sport. We saw the introduction of pay TV, including Foxtel and Optus Vision, seek to pay large amounts of money to broadcast sport. And this money flowed down into the sporting organisations and eventually allowed for much greater salaries in the, the code of rugby league in particular. And the, the tension that was created between the two pay TV networks actually created what was known as the Super League War. And it resulted in two rival competitions being formed and played uh, simultaneously. So we had the Super League competition and the Australian Rugby League running their own separate competitions at the time, both vying for popularity and market share. Eventually, the two competitions came together to form what we know as the NRL today. At the same time, we had the rugby union transforming itself into a professional game with a new global competition formed in 1996. We also had the Sydney Olympic Games in the year 2000, which was a, a big time for sport in Australia, particularly with the creation of new facilities, which have added to the professionalism of today's sport. For example, the ANZ Stadium that we see at Homebush and the facilities around that venue are all used today for large sporting events. So the development of pro professional sport has really shown the evolution of sport over time. Sport was once a leisure pursuit. Now it is a commodity or a product that can be bought and sold. Professionalism has improved the standard of sport over time and the old values of amateur and professional are now obviously shifted and we see athletes now being paid to play uh, and they are professional and they're focusing all of their time on sport as their full-time job and this has become more and more the case as we've come to the present day. Sport in its professional form has become far more marketable to the public and there's been increased television coverage over time 
with pay TV playing a big role in selling sports to the public and, of course, buying the rights to, to broadcast a sport. Rugby codes have been revamped and we've seen new expanded competitions and the same can be said for the AFL as well. And there's been large money generated by sponsors and companies who are wanting to associate their branding with particular sports. And we can see in other areas that we're, that more money is being injected into sport via government funding. And overall, we're seeing sport being used as a way of creating revenue. And, and this has flowed on to the players. And if you look in this table here, you can actually see that over time, it is showing us the AFL player earnings from 1990 through to 2018. And you can just see that the majority of the players in 1990 were earning between zero and $60,000. Okay, when you fast forward to 2018, you can see that there are a large proportion of players that have been earning 500,000 plus. Okay, so you can see a massive shift in player earnings in that period of time with players today, many players today earning uh, close to a million dollars 